and welcome back to Hunter's Yard. Thanks for joining us again. And this is part two of our eBay rescue on this um, little 040 pug. Um, obviously, Smokey Joe, as most of you will recognize, if you've not watched part one, links at the end of this video and uh, just up the top here if you're on a PC. And just looking for the first color, the main color to put on this one. So, this is going to be working on the docks, our PLA. So it's going to be a uh, sort of greasy, grimy, dirty color. So I was looking for an appropriate color. So I found a couple of um, round match colors. So we're going to use um, first one is roof grime. So we're going to use two parts of roof grime and one part of sleeper grime. And I'll put the links down to those below um, if I can find them on uh, on Amazon or anything like that. Um, and so this is the colour, so, so it's not, yeah, it's not grey or, or brown, it's like this greasy, mucky colour in between. So we've done this before, we're, we're going to give it a base colour of this, uh, mix it down with um, probably more thinner than I normally would, so make it quite thin. Just going to do a part at a time, and then we're going to brush it back. And the idea is that uh, it creates little streaks, and... Um, and the paint ends up mainly in the crevices and then we'll go over it a couple of times do the same again with different shades and uh, and then build up build up our layers then if you look at most uh, dirt and grime on anything it's just not one single color it's going to be built up different colors you know this is uh been working in different areas different environments so uh, it would have been you know coal in one place and then maybe mud in another so uh that's kind of the the idea of what we're trying to achieve so because it's quite thin it takes a little bit longer to dry than normal but uh, if it does start to dry then we can just uh, we can wet our brush with uh, just just plain water and damp it back a little bit so it's not completely soaked and then uh, just continue to brush it and that'll reactivate this we haven't got too long um, with acrylics they do dry and once they dry it's going to be difficult to uh, manipulate with um, with a brush even if it's damped in water so we're going to go all around the wagon now I won't show all of this because it gets a bit the same at the end of the day but you can see the effect so it's starting to build up a couple of little streaks there and under the bottom of the uh, saddle there um, which is going to make it a little bit heavier And we can go over this as many times as we need, just building up the effect. So some parts going to, as I say, going to be um, heavier. It's going to be um, more dirt and grime, which are going to catch in certain places. Um, so we may need to go over that a few times. But it just adds these, uh, you know, more layers to the whole model. Try to make sure all your brush strokes are going um, vertically from top to bottom because that's the way the runs would occur. Um, it just looks a lot the better. If you need to, if it's absolutely essential, then you can go sort of upwards as long as the, the strokes are in the in the correct orientation or go really side to side unless you can avoid it um, because it just will look a little bit unnatural.
Now, obviously, if you're modeling a different environment, you know, if you're in a, um, an iron ore quarry or in a clay pit or whatever, you can use different colors to this. We're just using this dirty grime color because it's appropriate for the sort of area the, the, uh, this loco would have ran in. Um, but yeah, if you're working in a quarry, then you're gonna use, you know, lots darker shades. Clay pits are gonna be lighter and so on. So uh, you can adapt this to, to match your, uh, your particular environment. And uh, my brushes just starting to fall apart. This is what happens when you get cheap brushes. Unfortunately, the hair starts to come out. So uh, this is the last one. We'll use this for this model, but this will be going in the bin shortly. So if you see any stray hairs, um, yeah, I've noted it too. And uh, we've taken care of that. So once we've done that, uh, we are going to do this with another color. So we've mixed it with, um, so rather than a two to one of gray to uh, brown, we've reversed it. And it's now more brown than gray. And we're gonna use that as a, as a sort of wash over the top as well. So we're gonna do the same again. And then we're gonna brush it back. And it doesn't show up too well on this particular uh, shot, but yeah, there, there is a subtle contrast between the two two colors and that's what we're aiming to do again like it just adds it's more layers to your to your model So moving on to the wheels and the uh, the, the chassis, we're going to use um, two parts of sleeper grime to one part of roof dirt. So it's the same as we've used on the um, second pass on the top of the loco. And we're not going to go too heavy on this because obviously we want to uh, minimize the sort of spray onto the wheels. So we're just being quite frugal and uh, sparing. Are they the same word? They mean the same thing, I guess, don't they? But anyway, that's what we're doing. Um, and we can use a PP3 battery just to move the wheels around so the parts that have been obscured by these, uh, the con rods and so on, so we can uh, make sure we get paint on everything that we need to. You can only use this um, this battery trick with uh, the DC. You can't use it on DCC, unfortunately. But anyway, we're going to give it a quick clean. So we'll clean, sort of clean as we go. Um, so you can see the PP3 will uh, get the wheels moving, and we're just using a airbrush cleaner. You can use water or anything at this stage because it's going to be fairly uh, easy to clean off. And we're just going to whiz it around so, so we clean it all with the uh, with the cotton bud. And then we'll dry it with the other end. And then we can do the same on the other side in a moment as well. So we want some water streaks in. Now we've, um, the only thing we've got to hand today is this Vallejo um, white. We've got a couple of versions of this, this Vallejo model color. But um, I don't know if it's just typical of, of white the, the pigments are really thick and it comes out really blotchy and I've thinned this down a bit uh, I've tried all sorts of things but it comes out I really don't like it but anyway it will uh, it will serve today because we're going to use some other bits and pieces over the top but I'm not going to put a link to this one because I don't really recommend that anyone uses this for this type of thing it just doesn't work out particularly well it just you can see it just comes out a really bit blotchy but we're, we're going to blend it in a little bit anyway um, I'll try maybe sort of model air colors, they might work out better, but it's just typical of this and uh, you know, some other light colors. The pigments are really, really um, sort of quite large, so maybe oils would have been best. And um, but anyway, it'll, uh, it'll be fine for what we're doing today, I'm sure. So 
So the brush I'm using is um, very slightly damp, it's just really not. Um, I've just to dip the tip in the water and, and just brushed it back. So it's uh, it it will just help to blend these colours and make these streaks and help control it a bit more the way that I want. And one of the problems you see is that we're, we're, we've got the row, the, um, when you start to blend, everything sort of stops the row and you get that little build up. So we've just had to use a smaller brush just to, uh, just to get rid of that little area. It's just a matter of putting in the colors where, where you think that, you know, you might get water runs, where water might build up and so on. So uh, we'll put some around that. Sorry, it's out of focus. It's uh, camera's picked up the wrong part on this one, but anyway, you can see. Uh, so you can see what I'm doing. We'll get a, a clearer shot of it in a bit, I'm sure. Now, if you're using your um, your airbrush, you've got that cap on the uh, on the end. Um, your the nozzle will sort of. You know, block quite frequently, so just be careful of that. And uh, from time to time, you need to clean off the end of the well, the needle, um, because it will it will uh, quite block. Um, it will block quite readily. That was the words I meant to say. So I've got um, Vallejo Air Sand, which is just like a beige colour. I just make a little bit of a contrast to that white just to soften the edges of that white up and it's a much uh, it's a much nicer paint the air to be honest than the uh, than that white and we're just gonna add a few of that in into the sort of uh, sort of the highlight areas go too heavy we just kind of want to blend it in a little bit and we can blend it back with the brush as well but uh, just bear in mind it will dry really quickly and uh, and you need to be on that you know really quickly with the with the brush you just really do one part at a time if you are thinking of even trying to blend an acrylic which isn't the best idea but we're just using this to maybe get some highlights on these edges you can just see there just makes the edges sort of pop out a little bit more and on the roof as well and I've done the sides of the roof just in the back edge you can see so we're just going to um, sort of paint it from the sort of opposite angle just so it's really catch the edge ever so slightly we don't want to make uh, a sort of big deal of it it's just to really sort of put a little fade on the edge and if we use the, uh, the damp brush and we can wash it back into that you know around the edges around the gutter and now with uh, our black soot now I don't want to use plain black so this one is uh, Vallejo Air Black mixed in with the sand color we've, we've just used for the roof so we've just added black into this to make it mainly black we don't want it totally black. 
I don't think, anyway. And we're just going across the top of the tank, at the, you know, the top here. Just really to uh, to mute down that, that sort of white a little bit more, because it's not going to be purely white, because we're going to get some soot and some grime built up on top of that as well. Now one of the things to think about is when we do any of these paints and uh, it's something that I sort of have trouble with all the time is what order to put things on, you know, what will come first, it's like chicken and egg. So you know, will the will the water streaks come first or will it be grime or soot uh, or rust and you know, should we be putting grime over rust? So uh, it's always a bit of a, a thought process and I do actually sit and think about you know, the order that uh, we should do these layers. Um, but if you've got any thoughts and you've got it back to front then do let me know in the comments down below anyway so we're going to add some of this black onto the uh, just on the joints really so where there might be maybe grease or so on and then we're going to move on to our powders now in our um, beautiful palette you can see we've got this uh, couple of shades of rust and this white equerry type powder and then in the middle we have our dark earth and uh, chrome oxide they just kind of sit there all the time and they're the colors I typically use so with a fine brush we're just going to really target the areas we want these rust to be and we're not going to be uh, use a big brush and be very general with this we're just going to dot it in so maybe on the um, on the springs that get a bit rusty maybe so we'll uh, we'll kind of just put a really tiny amount in there and then with another soft and clean brush we'll uh, we'll brush it in a little bit and typically in that area there just where the cab begins uh there's always a build up of grime or um or rust there so we normally uh we normally add a dollop of something in there whether it's uh, rust or grease or oils or whatever depends on what loco we're modeling and then just going to put a little bit underneath the bottom of the the saddle where it joins onto the rest of the chassis because yeah typically there's going to be a build up of grime there and that's where rust would start so just going to dot it in very very gently and then with another soft brush we're going to blend it in a little bit Maybe places like these where the you know the handrail start is you know you would typically get rust would start there because anywhere there's a join uh, or a raw edge that's where rust is going to start from. So we're trying to be kind of a little bit logical when we do this. And then we're going to mute it down with just a uh, Humbra Weathering Powder. This is Dark Earth, uh, one of our favourites. Um, it covers really well. It just seems to stick to everything, which is. Uh, a blessing and uh, and a curse at the same time but uh, in this case it's a blessing and with the slightest amount on our brush we're just going to brush across the top uh, again just kind of mutes everything down and ties it all in together And that's just dark earth we're using there just for the bottom and the uh, the edges of the cab um, I just really like the humble um, powders are just really 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 lovely just like to use them they just uh, they seem to stick to everything really well um, apart from the black soot I can never get on with the we're using the the sooty black ones from uh, from humble then they don't seem to stick to anything maybe uh, I've got the wrong technique for that But anyway, we'll continue to uh, to brush away with our uh, with our weathering powders and our our pigments, and uh, we'll do the rest of the model, and we'll come back in a sec. Uh, one thing I forgot to do a bit earlier on was to paint this hand, or I meant to paint this in earlier in black, and then we could weather over it. But anyway, I totally forgot for some strange reason. 
So uh, luckily we can get a piece of paper behind it. It just makes it easier to paint. I haven't got to be quite as careful. And we can use a couple of shades of brown and a rust. And, uh, and we're just going to quickly colour it in. And hopefully it won't, uh, won't look too obvious when we get to the end. Yeah, that's okay. We can, we can live with that. So we need to seal everything in with uh, our varnish, and this is, uh, as usual, um, Vallejo polyurethane uh, matte varnish, and this is mixed 50 to 50 uh, to thinners, the airbrush thinners in our uh, in the airbrush, and we're going to give it a couple of uh, couple of coats with this. We'll give it a couple of passes. So I normally do uh, all around twice and then I'll let the whole thing dry for a few hours and then give it another coat uh, just to make sure everything's sealed in properly so that if you pick it up you're not going to get weathering powders up on your hands and uh, sort of disrupt everything. Again need to be careful around the running gear because uh, uh, we just need to clean, clean off all the contact points again and we'll do the same again uh, like we did with um, previously on the on the rolling road when we did the service so these little bits here are where the uh, the coal will sit and we're just going to super glue this in the place so rather than using PVA this is much quicker so we're just going to put a few dots in where I want the coal to go and um, there always used to be lots of sort of coal sort of spilled over the top And just drop that into place and then literally a few seconds and uh, and we're good to go let's do the other side as well And very last touch on this is some grease on the end of the buffers and you can see AK Interactive shafts and bearings grease which is um, an enamel paint so it dries with a, with a little sheen to it so it looks like a grease. And I just normally dot it on and then either smudge it back with my finger or a, or a cotton bud, depends on how professional I'm feeling. And we do the same to the back as well. And that's it, we're done. Um, thanks for joining us again for part two. Thanks if you're new to the channel. Uh, if you can subscribe, that would be terrific. And uh, you can see all the new videos as they come out. Um, but apart from that, thank you again. And we'll see you very, very soon.